Hi, my name is Representative Ephraim Elliott and you've just been placed on alert. Welcome to the Elliott Alert. I have today my guest is Dr. Carol R. Engel, um, who's the chair and the director of our Aquaculture and Fisheries Center for UAPB. Welcome, Dr. Engel. Thank you. Nice All to right. be here. Yes, I was. Um, I, I'm. I, I know that the the new department. Well, not the new department because you guys just got a PhD. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and our, our kids can, uh, people can actually come in and get a PhD, and is that fisheries and aqua and culture? aquaculture? Yes, okay. sir. Outstanding, and uh, we just got accredited. That is that correct? We're waiting on the official announcement, but it's all but the official announcement, right. so it is imminent. Yes, <laughs> right. Sir. Uh, the the chancellor actually uh, said that at graduation, uh -huh. and um, I, I think that that's a, a wonderful thing because you you can also get a master's and a BA. Yes. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. And uh, you, the the program is your your department is nationally and internationally known. Yes, that's correct. Right. So uh, I think that's a great thing. Um, can you tell me what the mission is uh, for UAPB Aquaculture and Fisheries Center? I'd be happy to. As you know, UAPB is a land-grant university, and so our job basically is to improve the well-being of people in the state of Arkansas. So our mission as part of an 1890 land-grant university like UAPB, our mission is to use our expertise to, to make things better in the state of Arkansas. Our expertise is in providing support to the aquaculture industry in the state, solving their problems, making them more productive, more competitive, and also to provide support to the people who manage our, our natural fisheries. We have these amazing natural fisheries in, in Arkansas, but it takes science to be able to allow right. Game and Fish and the mm -hmm. U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to make the best management decisions. So that's our role, to provide that science-based information for the people who need it. Okay. Well, Dr. Engel, tell me how, who, who is a Dr. Carol Engel and how, how, did you, how did you get involved in this and how, why are you so passionate about it? It's a long story and I won't take up hours of everybody's <laughs> time, um, but basically I grew up enjoying the outdoors. I enjoyed being out on the water. I also grew up from with a very practical bent and was raised in a family that encouraged us to go out and make a difference in the world mm -hmm. and to make it on, on every level. And so when I was looking for a career, it took me a while to find this. Aquaculture <laughs> is not something I even knew about when I was an undergraduate student. Mm -hmm. But I did find about, out about aquaculture, and the more I read about it, the more I got excited about it. Mm -hmm. And then I went to Auburn University to do my graduate work. Mm -hmm. Auburn at that time was about the only university where you could specialize in aquaculture. Mm -hmm. And it absolutely confirmed the passion. For me, aquaculture combines agriculture, producing food, mm -hmm. what better service, and to pr produce a high quality product like a fish protein that's healthy, it's mm -hmm. good for us to eat, to be able to do that work with farmers who I really enjoy and working with and, and, and fully respect for what they do and their way of life. And, and then all together to, to make an impact, to make an economic impact by helping to maintain our farming community strong and viable. Mm -hmm. So it kind of brings together different aspects of things that, that attracted me to it. Right. And uh, th those, because uh, I know my, my son, he loves fishing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not a fishing uh, person, but uh, uh, he loves it mm -hmm. for some reason, and uh, I think that it's great that UAPB has your department where uh, it can get the kids who are interested in them mm -hmm. at a young age mm -hmm. and give them an opportunity to do some things that you guys do, because you guys did research um, across the, the, the nation, is that correct? That's correct, yes. Mm -hmm. And across the world. We and have some projects in Tanzania and do some mm -hmm. things in, in other countries. Our, Emphasis and priority is Arkansas. That's our mission, and we're very okay. committed and devoted to Arkansas. But we are called upon by people in other states and mm -hmm. people in other countries, and we provide as much assistance as we can. Well, when you, I'm glad you said that we're called upon. 
what kind of things when you're called upon, what, what kind of things do they call upon you to do? <laughs> That's a very long list again. I'll try to be <laughs> brief. Um, the number one thing that we're in call, work being called upon increasingly is to provide assistance to regulatory agencies mm -hmm. who are are looking at different kinds of regulations. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're under pressure and sometimes they're being sued by environmentalist groups mm -hmm. and and they're they're under pressure to, to develop some kind of, rec of regulations. Mm -hmm. Most of these agencies out of Washington have very little understanding or experience with aquaculture. Mm -hmm. So their experience is maybe with terrestrial aquaculture, with mm -hmm. cattle farming or mm -hmm. something like that. I'll give you one example. There was one agency that was trying to address a problem and their solution was looking at the cattle industry to put an ear tag on every fish. <laughs> well, you think about right. our minnow industry. Right. And we literally ship out six billion with a B uh -huh. minnows out of this state every year that are that big. Right. First of all, a fish doesn't have an outside ear to put anything on. Right. And then you think about trying to put something on every one of those six billion fish. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely not workable. But right. this agency, without ever having been on a fish farm, wouldn't understand that. So our people are called upon regularly. Mm -hmm. We have people going to Washington for a meeting next week. There's somebody else going to another meeting the week after that, mm -hmm. being asked by federal agencies to come in and provide science-based expertise mm -hmm. so that they can try to develop regulations that are based on good science, and they need experts to do that. Mm -hmm. This is why two years ago the National Aquaculture Association asked if we would be willing to host their home office here wow. because they see the need to have immediate access to the experts and the top experts in the field. Mm -hmm. And so they did. They co-located and, and are, have their home office on the UAPB campus right now. So we have people traveling every month at least on different national task forces and nif different national advisory committees providing that kind of support and expertise on a national level. That is wonderful. Um, I, I'm glad you said that. I have a couple more questions, but we, we're going to have to go to break. Uh, when I come back, um, I'll make sure that I ask you those questions. All right. All right. Abandoned and lost. From the dark, cold streets of the city to a cage in the local shelter to heaven, your lap. Welcome back to the Ellie Alert. My guest is uh, Dr. Carol R. Engel, who's the director and chair of our aquaculture department uh, and fishery center. Um, Dr. Engel, um, I, 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 was, uh, I was told recently um, uh, you guys were asked to help uh, in a national project. I think when uh, we had some issues nationally with uh, fish Mm -hmm. uh, and they called upon UAPB in your mm -hmm. department to, mm -hmm. to help with that. Is that is that correct? This happens all the time, actually, in mm -hmm. a number of different levels. We have somebody traveling to Washington next week to mm -hmm. advise Fish and Wildlife Service on some issues related to invasive species. Wow. We've had people mm -hmm. assisting Food Safety Inspection Service on some issues related to food safety in catfish. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that really attracted a lot of national attention, though, was our fish disease diagnostic laboratory. Wow. They receive fish samples from all over the United States for whatever problems. But one of those was, was here in, in, in Arkansas when right. they had the fish kill back you know, about New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. the, the fish kill out here in the river. Those fish of any kind of fish kill routinely are sent to our laboratory because it is one of the top fish disease diagnostic laboratories in the United States. And so they got involved in diagnosing that problem and, and figuring out what it was that caused those fish to, to die. Wow. So they were called upon to do that and attracted a lot of national media attention. But we, we, we are pulled into a lot of other task forces as well. That's a, a, amazing. Did you ever thought, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, my English teacher <laughs> would really kill me, but <laughs> did you ever think um, that uh, the, the department with this small university would, would grow in this capacity and have such a international and national known, um, uh, you know, uh, 
information or department? Let me answer that a little bit different way. Okay. The plan for the center. We uh -huh. operate on five-year strategic plans. Oh, okay. Our plan for the center was to develop expertise in key areas that are critical to our stakeholders in Arkansas, mm -hmm. critical to the fish farmers in Arkansas, critical to the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission, mm -hmm. and develop the kind of expertise that that will solve the problems and develop the support infrastructure, the facilities, bring in the right people, the mm -hmm. top people in the country, and provide them the support to solve the problems. Mm -hmm. Now that's what we've done, and that was our plan. The Fish Disease Diagnostics Laboratory, disease is critical. Mm -hmm. Our fish farmers cannot survive and compete if they don't have an expert to advise them on how to treat disease problems and how to work with them to prevent introduction of new diseases. So building a, a disease program and hiring the right person, and we found the right person, right. And Dr. <laughs> Andy Goodwin, uh -huh. and found the right person who is solving their problems. Mm -hmm. Now when somebody's doing what they're supposed to be doing in our program, right. and they are solving the problems of the state, mm -hmm. they become known for it, and, right. and, and that attracts attention because of our commitment to the state's problems. It's the same in our nutrition program, we're mm -hmm. known for that, it's the same our marketing scientists. We brought in a, a world-class marketing scientist who is doing a lot of tremendous work for our catfish industry right now. And mm -hmm. so our economics and marketing group and the nutrition group and the disease group and our overall expertise in pond and hatchery management and it's backed up by support areas and mm -hmm. water quality and physiology. But all together we're here to solve problems. And mm -hmm. when we focus on that and we do what we're supposed to do as a land-grant university, mm -hmm then the, the recognition comes. We didn't set out to attract the recognition. We, we set out to do our job and do it to the best of our abilities. Well, how, how long have you guys, from the beginning to now, how long has it been, what, 10 years, 15 years since it's been started? The center was created about 23 years ago in 1988. Mm -hmm. right. It was created by the, the Board of Trustees of the University of Arkansas system. Mm -hmm. UAPB was selected as the site for the Center of Excellence in Aquaculture Fisheries 23 years ago. Mm -hmm. it, it grew slowly in the beginning and, mm -hmm. and then when we start to build a critical mass then it's been a, we've been able to grow it a little faster once we got a critical mass of people here. Now are there other um, uh, institutions, universities that uh, take on a similar role that UAPB has done uh, or is doing? There are. In, in Alabama, Auburn University mm -hmm. is still probably the largest in terms of facilities and faculty. Mm -hmm. Mississippi State University has a very strong research program at its facility in Stoneville. They don't have the academic programs that, that we have. They're right. in Stoneville, and the academic programs are in Starkville. They're several hour drive and sort of disconnected there. So they do not have the academic programs that we have. There are some other pieces of programs at, at other universities. Mm -hmm. But those are the three major ones, and any major issues that evolve, those are the three universities that are called upon, UAPB, Auburn, mm -hmm. and Mississippi State. And I, I just think that that's amazing uh, because after 23 years to be able to put something like this in place and, and, and be nationally and internationally mm -hmm. known, mm -hmm. uh, that just shows the dedication that you guys have uh, and you're making UAPB look great. Well, and we're trying yeah. to do our jobs and mm -hmm. the credit goes to our faculty, staff and the students because everybody mm -hmm. works together to do it and the credit really goes to the leadership of Chancellor Davis right. for creating mm -hmm. an environment to allow people to, to be able to build a program like this. Right. And, and see, the, what's so special about it is uh, you guys are also uh, working with youth, too. Yes, is that of correct? course. Of course. We're a university. Right. <laughs> We're a well, university. I, I mean, kids who aren't, mm -hmm. uh, you, you guys do a lot of things in the community yes. as well. Yes, we do. So, um, you know, that, that right there makes our youth, uh, our high school, our elementary get more get interested mm -hmm. in what you guys mm -hmm. are doing and instead of them going to like the Auburns or the other the other mm -hmm. university they can come right here uh -huh. and get all that quality information and knowledge mm -hmm. which is a, a great thing and well, we'll I, we have to go to a break but we're, we're gonna come back and talk a little bit more about some of the great things that you guys are doing all right 
mi hogar, ay qué bueno, mi hogar es mi lugar, mi hogar, ay qué bueno, mi hogar es mi lugar. Siempre es bueno llegar a casa, pero hoy en día muchos se enfrentan el riesgo de una ejecución hipotecaria y la pérdida de sus casas. Making Home Affordable es un programa gratuito del gobierno de los Estados Unidos que ya ha ayudado a más de un millón de dueños de casa en problemas como estos. Y queremos ayudarte. Mi hogar, mi hogar, ay, qué bueno. Mi hogar, Averigua cuáles son tus opciones. Visita makinghomeaffordable.gov o llama al 1-888-995-HOPE. Cuanto antes actúes, mayor la probabilidad de ayudarte. Mi hogar, mi hogar es mi Welcome back to the LA Alert. Uh, my guest again today is Dr. Carol R. Engel, who's the director and the chairperson of our uh, agriculture mm -hmm. and fisheries department. Um, Dr. Engel, when we left uh, for break, we were just about to talk about some of the things that you guys do in the community mm -hmm. for our youth. Um, can, can you tell me about, I, I think if there's a, uh, a youth day that you guys do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, college, well, high school students mm -hmm. are able to come on campus and kind of learn about your program. Can you tell me about that? That's right. It's a day where we've attracted over the last two years, we've had over 600 high school students come for a morning. Mm -hmm. It's usually the, the last Thursday in the month of September. Mm -hmm. They come from as far away as the northern part of the state of Arkansas and come from close by and come from all over. What we do, it's not just to tell them about our program. Mm -hmm. Our faculty and staff and students are very excited about what, what they're doing and very excited about the field. And so we would like for high school students, we would like to share that excitement about science and math with them. And so what we do is set up sort of a, a midway. We set up a series of tents. And we had a 21 this year, I believe, set up a series of tents. Each one of them has a, an exercise for students to do that somehow involves science and math, but is also fun. Wow. And so they mm -hmm. can stop by, the students come in in groups, and they can stop and go tent to tent to tent, mm -hmm. and they do this exercise, and then they get a stamp that they can give to their teachers showing that they did it. So, right. for example, they'll learn how to age fish and use proportions to determine the age of a fish. Wow. They'll do things looking mm -hmm. at biochemistry in terms of diets for fish and mm -hmm. do calculations related to that. The marketing tent, they, they did an international trade game, so they learned some economics and some trade and relate that back to seafood and where it's coming from. Set up a whole series of things like that. Wow. We do have a, a career booth to talk about careers in fisheries, mm -hmm. but it's a day that we give teachers some examples of how to tie something very applied like what we do in fisheries and aquaculture, mm -hmm. tie it back into the, the basic curriculum strands that they have to teach in science and math. But we work hard to try to do this in a fun way. Okay. The, the students really have a great time. The, the teachers seem to like it. The principals support them coming every year. And it's just a lot of fun for us to share our excitement with high school students and teachers. So actually, while they're coming and they're having fun, they're actually learning. They are learning. <laughs> They and learning. they're learning math mm -hmm. and science. Mm -hmm. and, but we do it outdoors, <laughs> relaxed atmosphere, right. and all through hands-on kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Research shows that people learn better when you do it while you're, you just learn better when you actually do it in a hands-on kind of a way. Mm -hmm. We also follow up the, there are teachers that have asked for us to do some training for them too. So mm -hmm. over the summers we have high school teachers who come in for training programs wow. and, and we we teach them and show them what we're doing in terms of these ways to use science and math with fish and, and work with them that way too. Wow, that, mm -hmm. that's uh, amazing. Now you guys also go out into communities and you have either, is it a truck or a van that you... We have yeah. a trailer. A trailer. Mm -hmm. That's a okay. fishing trailer. Okay, a fishing trailer. Now, it's a fishing what, trailer. What is a, a fishing trailer? It just holds tons of fish? Or, or? No, not the fish. Okay. It, it holds everything you need to go catch a fish. Okay. And to develop educational programs while you're doing that. Mm -hmm. We have, as part of our center, we have an extension program. And the mm -hmm. extension program are the people that, that go out and, and transfer new research technology and things. And they, as part of our extension program, we have a youth fishing component a 4-H component to it and so mm -hmm. we provide all the materials for county agents to be able to develop an educational program 
some of these are short 10 15 minute segments mm -hmm. with their 4-h youth fishing clubs out in the counties mm -hmm. so to get them out everybody wants to catch fish right. but if along the way we want them to learn something right. about the environment about the habitat about the fish mm -hmm. so we just use fishing as an excuse to get them out there and then we roll in some educational activities so the trailer county agents and other people mm -hmm. can come and check out the trailer and pull it away it has fly fishing gear and all kinds of rods and reels and all kinds of bait and lures uh -huh. but then there are also notebooks that have segments of a 10 15 minute educational exercise wow. and so somebody can page through there pick one that they want to do uh -huh. and pull it out and all the materials are there to do that on site with that group of young people wow. so it's not just getting people to fish we are uh -huh. about education but we think mm -hmm. education is fun and we think it works better because when they're out fishing and mm -hmm. we can teach them about habitat uh -huh. we explain to them that it'll help them catch fish better if they understand the biology of the fish and the habitat and the environment and then they learn these things. So there'll so. be fun fishing. Uh -huh. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and uh, with an educational twist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, amazing. And um, how long have you guys been uh, out in the community, helping uh, or educating? Uh, uh, I guess our community in reference to it with with our kids. A very long time. Because the whole twenty three years. Actually, before that, the. Okay. The 4-H youth fishing programs were in place before I ever came here, and so I came here 23 years ago, so they've been going on for about 30 years. Mm -hmm. Now, they've expanded and we've developed them. The trailer wasn't there, and right. that was an mm -hmm. idea of one of our, our faculty or staff, and so it's mm -hmm. we've expanded. I'd like to think we're doing a better job now than 30 years ago, but mm -hmm. we have been doing this for over 30 years. Right. Now, um if somebody wanted to get in contact with you so you could actually come to their school or, mm -hmm. or do you guys, will you go yes, to? Yes, we do. Absolutely. Okay. We love to. Okay. Well, who, how would they get in contact with you to, uh, to set that up? They could call me. And my office number is 870-575-8523. Or they can contact us on our website at www.uaex.edu slash AQFI okay. for aquaculture fisheries okay. and or just come see us call come UAPB see. and ask for fisheries and, and they'll be directed to us <laughs> and uh, I, I can say that she will most definitely sit down and visit with you because I, I walked up there and uh, it's it's rare when you can just walk up and speak to the chair or the the, <laughs> the person in charge but we sat down and had a wonderful conversation mm -hmm. uh, and she was just so open to, to helping uh, us to do whatever we needed so I, I just want to thank you so very much for um, uh, coming on the show and educating us even more and uh, I wanted to let you know you've just been placed on alert <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> <All right. laughs>